you are an ass and you will always be an ass and you will end the course of your life as an ass and as far as I can tell, your life will reach its final day before you accept and realize that you are an animal. Miguel de Cervantes, Don Quixote de la Mancha. Hello and welcome back again. The great comparative literature scholar Eric Auerbach wrote an important essay on chapter 10 in which he argued that it exhibits the essence of Cervantes' novel as a conflict between fantasy and reality. We notice a particular aspect of this conflict, however, as Sancho goes off to find the palaces or alcáceres of my lady. Auerbach did not consider this cultural contrast between synonyms. As Sancho heads toward El Toboso, he performs a private soliloquy. This is more than the kind of monologue that we might hear from Hamlet. Sancho actually carries on a conversation with himself. Now, Brother Sancho, let's find out exactly where your grace is going. Are you going to look for a certain ass that's been lost? Absolutely not. Well then, what do you seek? I am seeking as if it were a simple thing to do, a princess, and in her the sun of beauty and the rest of heaven above. And where do you hope to find this, Sancho? Where? Why, in the great city of El Toboso. Cervantes is not just a master of dialogue. He is now a master of interior dialogue, which reveals a character's hidden anxieties. Why this particularly rare technique now? What does it tell us about Sancho? Sancho's immediate problem is how to find a woman who does not exist. He decides to improvise, relying on his master's gullibility. Being then crazy, which he certainly is, and with the kind of craziness that takes some things for others and judges white to be black and black to be white, it will not be all that difficult to make him believe that a peasant woman, the first one I come across around here, is the Lady Dulcinea. Then he sees just what he needs. When he got up to Mount the Grey, he saw that riding out toward where he was from El Toboso were three peasant women on three jackasses, or she-asses, for the author does not specify. Two aspects of the description that follows should interest us. First, there is much confusion about the sex of these women's mounts, which, as Francisco Rico notes, echoes the medieval debate over the sex of angels. Second, the narrator makes excessive excuses about why this should not interest us. Do we trust this narrator? There is more wordplay regarding the women's asses. Did you know a major theological debate throughout the Middle Ages was whether or not angels could be female? By the way, the Quran roundly rejects this possibility. When Sancho goes to inform his master that he has found Dulcinea, he mistakenly deploys a biblical term referring to the Canaanites of ancient Palestine, enemies of the Israelites. She and her damsels come mounted atop three spotted Canaanite trotters. Don Quixote corrects his confusion regarding the breed of Dulcinea's horses. Arabian canterers, you must mean, Sancho. Sancho then echoes the narrator's evasiveness. There's little difference between Canaanites and Arabians, but no matter what they're writing, they're the most beautiful ladies one could ever wish to see. What would Canaanites be doing in El Toboso? Where did the Israelites encounter the Canaanites? A, Turkey, B, Palestine, C, Castilla-La Mancha. Correct answer, B, Palestine. Regardless, Don Quixote is overjoyed. Recalling the theme of Sancho's salary, Don Quixote offers his squire the spoils of future conquests. And then he adds a more realistic form of incentive. I hereby grant you the best spoils that I shall win in the first adventure I have. And if that does not satisfy you, then I promise you the fillies that my three mares will give me this year, which, as you know, are about to give birth on the commons of our town. Sancho wisely accepts the fillies because it is far from certain that the spoils of our first adventure will be good. Then again, just how good are horses raised on public lands likely to be? Juan de Mariana's famous phrase about the tragedy of the commons comes to mind. When an ass belongs to many, the wolves eat it. That's all for now. We'll see each other in our next video.
If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.